Joining me now by phone is Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. Congressman Kinzinger serves on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He served in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and is now a lieutenant colonel in the Air National Guard. Congressman, thank you so much for being with us. The U.S. sending these additional troops to the region. Have you been briefed on this at all? And is this, in your mind, strategically and militarily the right move right now? I think, and, and thanks for having me, John. I think any time that there is any kind of threat to military personnel, you have to put the right force in place. Uh, 1,000 troops is not an offensive posture. There's no, uh, you know, expectation that they would go offensive. But to have those securing bases and securing personnel is extremely important. So I do think it's the right move. I have not been briefed on any move changes. We're out of session right now. We'll go back tomorrow, and I'm sure we'll see more at that point. So the acting defense secretary, Patrick Shanahan, said today as an announcement that the U.S., quote, does not seek conflict with Iran. But with these additional troops being deployed, are you concerned? And this is one of the things we hear from around the world, concerned about a possible miscalculation by either side. Oh, sure. There's always a concern. And, uh, you know, you always run into uh, proportional responses by both sides. But the other side may not know what proportional is to any action by the other side. So this is always a dangerous situation. But in terms of protecting our allies, protecting our troops in the region, uh, we have to put a size that's proper to defend that. And I think be very clear uh, that we will not allow the Straits of Hormuz to be shut down, that we do have the capability to prevent that. We hope it doesn't go there. But that's really Iran's decision at this point. So the Pentagon released these new photos. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at them as more proof that Iran was behind the tanker attacks. Do you personally have any doubt that Iran did this? No, I, I don't have any doubt at all. I, I mean, first off, this is good information. Uh, you know, the only people you see that are throwing out things like false flag is Vladimir Putin and the Russians. And frankly, anything they say, usually the opposite is true. And some of the trolls on Twitter. Uh, and plus, there's a 40 year history of Iran doing stuff like this. I don't think they're trying to provoke a response by the United States, but I think they're trying to do right up to the point so they can look as tough as they can without, frankly, inviting any military action. We don't seek conflict. But I think Iran needs to be very much understanding that if there is a conflict, it'll be one sided and will win, even though we don't want that. So the U.S. has had some international support here, the Trump administration, but it's hardly full throated. And there do seem to be some suspicions about credibility. Uh, do you think that is a result over the issues with honesty the president has had domestically and the failure to build up some of these relationships overseas? Uh, it could be. It could be. Look, I, I, one of the one of my criticisms of the president, and I think he's doing a good job in a lot of areas, but is his tone and how you talk to allies, how you reach out and build alliances. Allies are extremely important to us. It's not a one sided relationship. Uh, but I also think, look, people have a little they're skittish from the aftermath of the Iraq war and things like that. That's understandable. But at the end of the day, we cannot we must not. Uh, sell out our national defense and foreign policy to any kind of mistrust like that. And I think it's pretty obvious that it's Iran. I think most people, uh, you know, that, that think that, frankly, can look at this stuff and understand it, know that as well. Now, I know you've been critical of the Iran nuclear deal that was signed under President Obama in the past. But as you sit here today and we get the news that Iran is enriching uranium uh, and building up a stockpile, do you believe that Iran is closer to having the capability to build a nuclear weapon today than it was six months ago. I don't know about today. I think they will be closer soon. But I think the thing to keep in mind is a couple points. First off, we're about halfway through the Iran nuclear deal before that starts to expire anyway. So that's in the near future. Secondarily, one of the big things the Obama administration had omitted was the development of ballistic missiles as well as Iran's behavior in the region. And what we've seen in the last two years in Syria, in Yemen, in Lebanon is Iran expanding that. So I think pulling off the sanctions has actually reined in Iran's behavior. Um, so I think it was the right thing to do. Well, well, but the fact is they have a bigger low-grade uranium stockpile tonight than they did six months ago. Yeah, and I think they're doing that because uh, they're trying to pressure uh, Europe and us, frankly, to go back to the deal. This is a weak nation that's lashing out. Look, strong, powerful, competent nations uh, don't put mm -hmm. uh, bombs on innocent tankers. And so it's obvious mm -hmm. they're struggling right now. So, Congressman, just one last question. A senior Iranian official warned the U.S. that or warned the world that the U.S. and Iran are moving closer toward confrontation. Do you think that's what's happening here? Well, I, you know, any, anytime anything like this happens, certainly are going closer to confrontation. I don't think we're on the verge of confrontation, 
But I do believe that's Iran's decision. I, it, no matter what the conspiracy theorists say, we don't look for a war with mm-hmm. Iran. But I think nobody should doubt that we would win if something like that was brought to our doorstep. All right, Congressman Adam Kinzinger, thank you for joining us by phone tonight. When you get back to Washington and you get briefed, please call us back and let us know what you've heard. You bet. And my thoughts with Anderson's family, too. We really appreciate that. I know Anderson does as well.